Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the Mind My Mind talk show once again. Today is day two of World Awareness Day for ADHD, that is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Yesterday, we spoke with Ms. Carmen Bedi, who's a child psychologist, about various strategies on how to deal with ADHD. Today, we have with us Dr. Aishwarya Paranjipe, who has been practicing as a, she's a clinical psychologist and has been practicing in the field for over 12 years. And she has been dealing with a lot of extreme cases of ADHD. Yes, we all understand that most problems uh, start in the childhood as early as almost about two to three years of age. Because of parents' non-acceptance of this issue, the students at times, or the kids, I should be saying, uh, sometimes go undiagnosed. And that creates a further problem and leads them to, you know, for the disease or for the problem to worsen. Uh, so we have with us uh, uh, Dr. Aishwarya, who will help us understand a little better on what happens so, Dr. Aishwarya, first of all, is it right? I, you know, my mouth has come out that this is a disease. Is it? Can it be called a disease? It's uh, more than a disease. It's a disorder, okay. which can eventually be cured. So, so I stand uh, corrected. It's a mental disorder. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So, Dr. Aishwarya, what happens when uh, things uh, do not get detected on time? So um, again, just as it doesn't get um, very easy for the children when it is at an early age, things tend to worsen for the children as the ADHD doesn't uh, get detected uh, eventually and things to turn really, really bad for them. So coming to the academics, the children start uh, trailing behind. They are unable to cope with the next classes while they get pushed on to the next classes, they are unable to manage with the academics at all. And this despite and having good IQ. Absolutely. And as a result of this, their uh, so-called misbehavior starts getting highlighted all the more. So it impacts really, their emotional well-being then? Uh, affects their emotional well-being. And also the fact that schools start now calling the parents uh, over and over again, complaining to them how their child is absolutely ill-behaved and as a result, often tend to ignore the positive points in the child, which is the biggest thing. So ADHD is not just all about misbehavior. The child, like other children, also has a lot of positives in uh, him or her which tend to get uh, ignored because the so-called misbehavior starts getting highlighted. As a result, eventually, since the child starts getting pointed out all the time, the child's self-esteem starts getting deteriorated. The child's confidence is at an all-time low. Now, the situation is where his peers, his teachers, and his parents are all pointing out at how the child is such a bad person and does not know how to behave. And there's just about no one for the child to really understand his mind or her mindset. And by mindset, I mean, what are the child's actual feelings and emotions is something that just nobody is bothered about at this stage. As a result, the children start getting into uh, depression they become, they, they become anxious, they start uh, facing anxiety issues, they start um, experiencing spells of crankiness, uh, they start uh, blaming themselves, and eventually they also indulge into self-harming behavior. So this comes out of frustration because just the child feels that the, chi the child is not being understood by anyone now. So this is all about a child's emotional well-being. Mm -hmm. On the social front, also, 
द चाइल्ड इज ऑलवेज बींग पॉइंटेड आउट एज सेंग इसके साथ मत खेलना द चाइल्ड विल टीच यू हाउ टू मिस बिहेव सो नाउ द चाइल्ड इज ऑल्सो गेटिंग आइसोलेटेड इन द सोसाइटी एंड देर फोर द चाइल्ड डज नॉट हैव एनी फ्रेंड्स इधर सो लोनलीनेस ऑल्सो sets in and obviously all the other issues so uh, this stage of, you know this happens once things go undetected for a long time i i believe uh, so to now at this stage to help the children uh, or anybody even an adult who suffers from adhd uh, i believe there is a clinical intervention that is required yes so how does one uh go about that what happens when a child has to uh face clinical intervention uh so a clinical intervention is basically a a a multi faceted process mm-hmm. or a multi layered process as i would call it mm-hmm. now uh it requires all stakeholders to cooperate and understand what is happening Mm-hmm. so for the first time when the child comes to a clinical psychologist uh the clinical psychologist will uh, take a brief history of what has been happening mm-hmm. and what are the interventions that the parents have done so far uh what kind of punishments have the parents given whether there are any um physical impairments that the child is having whether there are any um deficiencies that the child might be having so once uh, these are ruled out like a physical impairment like an eye impairment or a visual impairment or a hearing impairment are ruled out mm-hmm. uh, thereafter um the children are subjected or administered an iq test just to find out whether their uh, brain functioning or their average functioning is absolutely normal Mm-hmm. we generally the process is that uh, we need to f- ensure that it is pure adhd and nothing else okay so, so as a result you will go through the whole process of ensuring process to ensure that the child is only having adhd and nothing else right. so we will also the child examined by a pediatrician which means mm-hmm. an md pediatrician mm-hmm. so yes <laughs> that is something that we really need to so it's a uh, biological ha- social emotional uh, psychological screening that the child has to go through yes yes so once we are absolutely sure that the child just has adhd and nothing else and since the child has gone undetected and the symptoms are really really very severe mm-hmm. uh, we may refer the child to a pediatrician for some kind of medication as well so that mm-hmm. the child calms down a little you and know also, because the uh, pedi- uh, pediatric psychologist um no uh, basically any any psychologist will mm-hmm. first uh, or psychiatrist clinic- sorry uh, what i meant yes. was a psychiatrist so pediatric yeah. psychologist yes uh, uh, generally the pediatricians are quite uh, well aware of the basic drugs that they can administer to an uh, adhd child however mm-hmm. if the symptoms don't go away with that medication as well then we do refer the children to um, a pediatric psychiatrist as well however uh, over here uh, parents are at a greater comfort if we refer the child to a pediatrician and not a pediatric psychiatrist because the term pediatric psychiatrist tends to disturb the parents a lot and then there is a chance exactly no, exactly so there is a chance that the parents will not go and seek help from a psychiatrist but they will definitely go to a pediatrician and seek help so which is what we want okay and uh, is this you know if if the child is put on medication how long does that medication last uh, of course you know ha- there are uh, many many cases where we spoke about yesterday um you know where we discussed number of cases that were actually taken off medication by the right uh, psychological interventions but i believe that is only uh, when uh, the disease has been detected early and the right strategies have been adopted 
but once things go bad uh, how uh, how long does the medication have to be administered um i would say that uh, instead of looking at the uh, the duration of the medication i would look at the uh, symptoms going away and only mm-hmm. when the symptoms go away would i say that there is some kind of improvement in the child so generally if there is an uh, uh, if the child is on a medication and uh, the child is uh, referred to a psychologist as well then a combination of psychiatric medication and psychotherapy will help to bring about better results mm-hmm. so um, basically if we are able to treat the misbehavior so called as they as it is called in lay terms basically then the child will uh, be considered as um, someone who's been treated of adhd now over here we will have to involve basically training the child's brain to sit in one place concentrate and increase the child's attention span now if we try counseling the child into you know telling by telling him that you need to sit in one place and you need to concentrate that is not going to work so practically giving the child activities where by the child will be able to concentrate and improve his attention span despite the fact that the child is uh, on medication the child can still overcome uh, uh, through uh, adhd through various strategies with the help with a multi uh, faceted approach of uh, you know a psychiatrist uh, a pediatrician along with a clinical psychologist Uh, okay. what we and of course child psychologists or uh, student uh, therapists uh, child uh, therapists uh, on the school premises as well uh, yes. what happens as the child goes uh, grows older uh, right are, are there you know if a child gets uh, cured uh, is it are there possibilities of relapses uh, later on in phase uh, you know in uh, older phases for example you know adolescence is a painful period any which ways yes right even for a child who's absolutely normal now uh, as a child with adhd when they grow uh, can this become a problem see when i say uh, adhd gets cured you will have some side effects of it uh, which will last for a lifetime so okay. something like inattentiveness or um, getting distracted by uh, very small stimuli in the environment will still remain so uh, even if i say that adhd can be cured yes you will have the after effects uh, lasting for a lifetime so uh, yes you will see such things so it's basically you have to have a process uh, that works for you lifetime and that involves a lot of the stakeholders to be aware of how to deal with that absolutely absolutely and you, not even one stakeholder giving up uh, can really work in the benefit of the child excellent excellent so dr branch pe uh, as a closing note what would your advice be uh, to parents uh, of adhd children to the children who suffer from adhd and adults who suffer from adhd um as a closing note i would like to say that um, never give up hope because hope is something that uh, keeps the worst of cases uh, to their best of abilities and so i would like to tell everyone not just parents or children having adhd but just to everyone that hope is the basis for every thing to fall in place and when you have hope things fall in place automatically and of course that has to be uh, supplemented by hard work and dedicated efforts towards improvement thank you so much on that note especially 
you know, all the more a big thanks because you're suffering from viral. You were in the emergency also uh, yesterday, and yes, you were here to help us understand this topic better. Get well soon, and thank you so much. Thank you, dear thank you viewers. So thank you, dear viewers. And if you like this uh, talk of ours, please do press like and please do subscribe to our channel and share this ahead with those who might want to understand a little more about this topic. Thank you very much. See you soon again.